good day to all of you guys. Welcome to the Four Majors. I am Sir Edgar Angeles and I am making science-related videos. If you want 100% of nourishment to your brain, hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to get updated to our premium content. In this video, we are going to talk about the conservation of momentum, which is another statement of the conservation of energy. As we all know, energy is released during collisions. We have a lot of examples of collisions in our daily lives. Some of it released and or transport tremendous amount of energy. Just like the collision of an asteroid to our planet several million years ago. Some of it have dreadful effects, just like a car colliding to one another, taking one's life. These situations shows that energy is transferred during collisions. Since collisions involves energy, it must follow the law of conservation of momentum, which is an understatement of the conservation of energy. An elastic collision shows perfect transfer of momentum, just like when a friend's cue ball hits the rack. There is no permanent deformation observed in the cue ball or on any other billiard ball. The momentum of the cue ball is due to the change in its velocity and it is being amplified by its mass. So the product of these two gives the cue ball its momentum. Once the cue ball hits the rock, it shows momentum change. It transfers the energy to other billiard balls until they came into a halt. We can rewrite the formula for the momentum using Newton's law of motion and we are going to utilize his second law and we are going to use some of our differential calculus skills so that we can arrive at a certain correct formula and this formula means that all the momentum of the cue ball or of any other object largely depends on its mass times its velocity we can compare the momentum of several objects as a boy and a major leaguer can throw a pitch but there is a big difference in their momentum. This difference is due to the big difference in the velocity of their pitches. We have different types of bullets. They have different masses. They have different characteristics. So, they have different momentum. Even laser beams have their own momentum too. And this is according to Einstein's energy equation. E equals mc squared. And during a boxing match, a split seconds of time is very important because during this time span, say for example, E sub I to T sub F of the collision, when a boxer throws the punch, energy is being transferred. And during this instant, catching Pacquiao's punch will really hurt. We can relate this to the energy transfer during collision and to the concept known as impulse. And this is given by the formula. This equation is based on Newton's second law of motion. We can also rewrite this in terms of the formula for momentum. We can use this to express the concept of impulse momentum theorem. This formula can account for the total energy change or the total change in momentum of a particle during the time interval delta t. It is equal to the sum of all the forces multiplied by the total time span that the forces are acting on a certain object. According to some definition in the web, impulse is a force that starts a body into motion or a motion that is started by a force. And you should consult Merriam-Webster's dictionary for other details. Therefore, we can relate it to the momentum of the particle since a change in momentum of an object changes its state of motion. We can rewrite impulse J is equal to the sum of all the forces times delta T. But this quantity can also be written in terms of momentum because this is just equal to the momentum P which is equal to dmv over dt. Substituting this term for F or for the force, we can cancel delta T giving us the formula for the impulse J. It is equal to the change in momentum dp which agrees to the definition we get in the net. We may wish to monitor the change in momentum before and after the collision. 
In an elastic collision, each object has its own momentum before they collide to one another. But just after the collision, each object will move differently. But nonetheless, the total momentum of the system is not changed. We can analyze the situation by calculating the momentum before and after the collision. And we can compare the values for verification purposes. Once we verify that they are equal, this leads the way so that we can formulate the law of conservation of momentum, which states that the total momentum of the system will not change and will remain constant. Hence, momentum is a conserve. One thing. We can write this law mathematically using differential calculus. We can assert that the change in momentum P or delta P is equivalent to the derivative of mass times velocity over delta T, which is equivalent to zero. It is not that the momentum is zero, but this formula just tells you that momentum doesn't decrease or increase throughout the collision process. This is the law of the conservation of momentum video we will deal with worded problems involving momentum if you have reached this part of the video i'm sure you are eager to learn too and probably you like it too so please give it a like click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you will always be updated to videos like this i am sir edgar angeles and this is the four majors i'm leaving you a message this is your knowledge and this will be your power I'm signing out see you next time Bye-bye.